this uh, topic here. And uh, the topic is P for uh, thoracic aorta. Uh, to some extent, maybe this is the best talk of the morning because there's a lunch after this. <laughs> okay, so I do not have any industry sponsorships, but a very warm and uh, complete hospitality at, in uh, Bangalore here. This is just more of a formality slide showing the place of uh, your work, which is National Heart Center, one of the buildings of Singapore General Hospital. And I also have some uh, academic uh, positions with the university. So I'm going to speak, uh, try as much as possibly 20, 22 minutes about uh, PE for aorta. And we know that it's a quite a useful and a rapidly accurate diagnosis for even the primary or the secondary aortic pathology. We'll go through the, we'll quickly look at a couple of slides for anatomy, and then the whole idea is to go into the pathologies. As this is a PE workshop, there should be images and videos and uh, much more uh, uh, interpretations. So, the, uh, starting with the anatomy of uh, aorta, and things what we are looking here is aortic annulus, uh, sinuses of valsalva, sinotubular junction, ascending aorta, arch with its branches, the descending aorta, and then the abdominal aorta. Uh, some of the measurements I have mentioned in the picture itself. The important salient relationship is the aortic root and the proximal aorta. It lies in the pericardium. So, whenever there is a dissection, there is a risk of amphora. The rest of the things probably help in uh, T, T, T assessment. It's anterior piece of LS, anterior to LA, which makes an excellent imaging modality. There have been a couple of guidelines published. Uh, by the European and the American societies for the assessment of the, the assessment of thoracic aorta. So we start with the aortic root. The, the aortic root it consists of aortic annulus, sinus of valsalva, and sinotubular junction. Remember the sinotubular junction, that segment is the, which joins the proximal aorta is the weakest for the uh, pathologies. Three sinuses of Valsalva, non coronary cusp, left coronary cusp, and the right coronary cusp. So each the right hand is shown here. So what happens is aortic valve cusps, they insert from the aortic annulus to the sinotubular junction. Now the dilatation of this ST junction that will cause it to displace away from the center, thus loss of coarctation, and hence aortic regurgitation. So the aorta will ascending aortic arch descending and the walls. So the ascending aortic diameter should not exceed 4 centimeters or 40 millimeters. Nowadays, a lot of things are being done to move it into per meter square. So ascending is recommended to be up to 21 millimeter per meter square, descending up to 60 millimeter per meter square. Sinotubular junction is so the ascending aorta starts from the sinotubular junction going right up to the brachiocephalic artery. Arch of aorta, it starts in the brachiocephalic, goes up to the left subclavian and it has therefore three branches. Descending aorta is from left subclavian right up to the diaphragmatic artery or hiatus. If you look a bit more of the segmental anatomy, there are five zones. Zone zero is ascending aorta to the proximal arch of the innovated uh, artery. Zone 1 is between the innovator and the left carotid. Zone 2 is between left carotid and the left subclavian. Zone 3 is the curved distal, uh, distal arch to the proximal descending. And zone 4 is more of a straight path of the descending up to the T4. Uh, normal, si normal sizes are as shown here for men and women. The brackets, they are showing the upper limits. So annulus 2.6. Sinus of Valsalva 3.4, so ST junction 2.9, and then aorta is 3, 2.7, 2.6, ascending, descending, and distal. Probably next one minute, I just wanted to go to the normal PE views before showing the pathologies, just for the uh, recap for our eyesight. So, mid esophageal aortic valve short axis, things have been covered today morning, so I won't go through the details. We all know the users mainly. We'll focus this, all these key 
Uh, these are the views for aorta. So all the implications we are looking for utility for the aortic pathologies. Aortic valve short axis view. Aortic valve uh, long axis view. Some image I have uh, magnified showing what measurements we can do here. That is the mid-esophageal ascending aorta short axis view. These all are normal views, by the way. So mid-esophageal ascending aortic long axis view. Descending aorta short axis view. Descending aorta long axis view. Mm -hmm. So just to look how the normal thing looks, upper esophageal, upper esophageal aortic arch in a long axis and in the short axis. Mm -hmm. AP aortic scanning in short axis and in long axis. So all the you know, things which we need to check out are dilatations, aneurysms, dissections, atherosclerosis, and some miscellaneous pathologies. So we start with aortic dilatations and aneurysms. Of course, it can affect any part of the aorta. Uh, as mentioned, the normal size or dilated when it's more than 3.5 and aneurysmal when it's more than 5.5. Our center performs quite a high, in the high <coughs> amount of aortic work, anything going up to 40 per year, including right up to the elephant's trunk. The etiopathology, you will find it uh, written in any books or common causes, which I won't go to uh, those details. So aneurysms, they as as uh, ascending aorta, it tends to be in the distal to the ST junctions, and depending on the location, the terminologies may vary. Again, it may also vary according to etiology or morphology. So like fusiform, it's much more sausage shape or a circumferential, whereas sacular is much more like an outpouching. The patients may be asymptomatic or right wing, they may, or, or even up to CCF, and there are various modes where you can diagnose it. So when you've got a PE, you are looking for information of diameter, location type, diagnosis of AR, rule of dissections, and open versus endovascular repair. So I'm going to go through a few things now. So one of the cases of here, ascending aortic aneurysms uh, with the Marfan syndrome. So you see marked dilatation and aneurysm. There's an involvement of sinus of Valsalva, sinotubular junction. The important point for a Marfan's is ST junction, which will show effacement of ST segment. AR may occur, but remember if you have that, uh, if you have seen this, do keep in your mind, there might be a mitral valve prolapse. Hypertension, another cause of uh, aneurysm. The difference from here to the, that of Marfan is ST junction, there is no effacement. So normal ST junction in a hypertension induced ascending aorta aneurysm. It may be post aortic stenosis or post bicuspid aortic stenosis. And one of the very classical findings with the bicuspid aortic stenosis dilatation is there is a mid ascending aorta segment dilatation. Again, ST junction will be normal. So this diagram is showing sinus of Valsalva aneurysms. The green is the left, the purple one is the non coronary and the yellow one is the right. And the all arrows are showing like a potentials of where that particular sinus of Valsalva aneurysm can open or rupture into. That's again the same one, but it was much more this one. So we come into the most common is uh, right uh, coronary cusp sinus of uh, uh, Valsalva ascending aortic aneurysm. The classical picture described as the wind sock defect. So it may produce into right atrium, it may produce, it can occlude the RVOT, and if that happens, then it will result into the failure of RV failure. Just for here. Sinus of Valsalva, again, it may be because of the non coronary cusp. And this NCC SOA, it may affect the interventricular septum. It may appear as a cyst. It can protrude into the RA or it can protrude into the LA. If it goes into LA, of course, you will have the symptoms of LA and then LB failure. This was our just a couple of months case, we had a mitotic aortic aneurysm. Infection, if anywhere it involves, it will weaken wherever that particular aortic valve is involved, that will dilate and that will be a risk for rupture. 
So it may be again secular or it may be discrete. The wall uh, on, on uh, surgery, you may find the wall is filled up with the necrotic debris, sometimes as well as thrombus. So that was all about dilatations and aneurysms. We go into more form, uh, I mean another pathology of dissections. Again, the list of uh, causes can be found, etiopathogenesis can be found out in the books. Echo diagnosis, we are looking up things like intimal flap, thrombus and spontaneous echo contrast, true lumens and false lumens, and some uh, repairs. Patient may complain of either chest pain or back pain, classic presentations, it may, there may be a tear in the wall of aorta, or in the intimal layer or in the medial layer, it may be linear, it may be circumferential. And the classifications are two groups, DBT's classification and Stanford's classification, Stanford's A and B. So the typical dissection is being shown, uh, is shown across the aorta. So what's in the type A, how far it goes, whereas what's in the type B. So I won't go into explaining this. DBT classification type 1, 2, and type 3 is 3A, 3B, up to, uh, respectively how, uh, what part of uh, aorta is. Uh, dissected. So we, of course, transthoracic becomes a limited uh, visibility, but T is often required, and if, it, if the patients are unstable, T may go ahead of CT. So we are going to look up for a lot of information, what we can find when we get a case of dissection. Unfortunately, when the dissection presents in theater, the time is so short, and we are really trying to do quite a lot of things. Uh, but still, there is some moments where we can capture some good images. So I'm just going to show some dissection images involving ascending aorta, arch, and descending aorta. So this is a, a ascending aortic uh, dissections where we can actually see the true uh, flat and true lumen and false lumen. This is the same patient ascending aortic dissection in a mid sophageal ascending aortic short axis view. Again, showing the true lumen, false lumen, and the spontaneous echo contrast. One of the another case which uh, we had is this dissection flap. What it is showing is uh, it does not cross the aortic valve during the diastole. So the entire, dias entire dissection flap is contained within the ascending aorta. And that the reason which I showed was another picture, another patient with a dissection flap, which is actually passing through the aortic valve into the LVOT, even in the diastole. So you may have very different uh, varieties of presentation, or there may be a completely circumferential flap, uh, as seen in this uh, view. Similarly, the dissection, there may be an aortic arch dissection. So the aortic arch view showing up a flap, a true lumen and false lumen seen in this. Or descending thoracic aorta, very easy image, very easily seen flap, and again two different lumens and spontaneous echo contrast. That's again now in the long axis, the only reason to put up this image was that it actually shows there may be uh, two communications between the true lumen and the false lumen. Intimal flap, so tear in the intima, and it's a mobile with the flow of blood. So aorta will be dilated, and aorta below the flap may be thickened, or it may even exhibit some hematoma. And if there is a spontaneous echo contrast, it's going to signify some stasis of blood. In some situations, you may see thrombus and spontaneous echo contrast, and as said, it will be uh, like a signifying the stasis of blood. So what about true lumen versus false lumen? Very commonly asked questions in the TE exams as well. How do you identify? So true lumen is the one where you can trace the lumen or try to trace the lumen right up to the aortic root. It will increase in the diameter during the systolic phase. Again, it's more smaller. It's more regular in shape. So regular in the main, it may be either circular or it may be uh, oval. False lumen, it may show uh, flow of blood flow stasis or thrombus or spontaneous echo contrast, or it may even see some fibrinous material of the intima. That was the arch of aorta, true, the same image which I had shown earlier, but this was like more focusing on the true lumen and false lumen. So this
this one is the top, le the top left one showing that the cannulation of dissecting aorta, so identification of the true lumen, the drawing lines and drawing wires going in, and then confirming the cannula position. <laughs> Descending for us, again the same image, but only this time focusing to show the true lumen and false lumen uh, in this dissections. I'll come back into the intraventricular lymphoma in the uh, later part. So, complications with the dissections, ST dilatation, aortic regurgitation, aortic valve involvement, coronary artery involvement, tampon heart, and aortic thrombus. So, few pictures which we find on and off. So, ST dilatation which can result in obviously AR, involvement of the left vein, coronary artery over here in the dissection plan. Tampon art, very classically seen, almost like a circumferential. And in a worst scenario, or sometimes you may even see thrombus in the aorta, which is quite a grave sign. Common procedures, why these patients will have is valve ascending grafts, composite grafts, aortic arch grafts, so the less common will be uh, elephant trunk. So the Bentall's procedure or the modified Bentall procedure most common, uh, most commonly currently standard technique. So it includes removal of the diseased segment, replacement with the Dacron graft. So the proximal site is often at the supracoronary at the ST junction. The distal site is just proximal to the brachial cathodic artery. The arrows are showing the, the implantation of the coronary buttons. And then the numbers one, two, and three. These are the very potential sites with the development of pseudo aneurysms later on. So post Bentall's operation, the graft has been put in, and you will have uh, appearance shown here as a small arrow showing the corrugated appearance. A prosthetic graft, again, it appears more of a more. It's more cylindrical, more eco dense. The diameter is quite uniform. Even post as the dissection, I mean, it's not very uncommon to see the dissection going quite down right up to the IEX. So even if the type A, or even if uh, ascending aorta replacement has been done, or even the ascending and the arch is done, it's not uncommon to see that there is still a dissection flap in the descending. For a aorta. Of course, don't forget for the regional wall motion abnormalities and the rest of the echoes uh, pictures. You may see uh, composite drafts being used, and uh, which is with the mechanical valve. Post, post of coming out, post of the appearance will be shown in the top, which is like a, a yellow arrows. So that's the portion of the graph that has actually created sinuses of Russell wall, and it resembles the shape of an aortic root. And it's a polyvital appearance. Uh, it's the mechanical one that's usually the tilting disc type. So that was so aortic dilation, aortic aneurysm, ather, uh, aortic dissections. Coming on to uh, atherosclerosis. Very commonly in the elderly, age, uh, elevated cholesterol, hypertension. More common in the descending thoracic aorta. And grading is 1 to 5 with a normal severe thickening. 3 and 4, atheromas less than 5 or more than 5, and the mobile in 5. So grade 1, maybe another probably less than 5 minutes. So grade 1 and 2, as you see, the bottom left is grade 1, up is grade 2, uh, more thickening. 3 is at the bottom, less than 5 millimeters. 4 is upstairs, which is more than 5 grade 2 meters. And the mobile atheromas, grade 5. Aortic group sometimes once in a year or a couple of times a year you may also see a very severe classification giving an appearance of a brittle or a porcelain aorta which will show excessive echogenesis. So sometimes you may require ectic RDL for confirmation. Some miscellaneous uses, or some miscellaneous things for uh, aorta assessment, IBP position, pseudoaneurysms, trauma, thrombus, uh, coarctations and artifacts. Pseudoaneurysm, it can occur uh, at any position after the rupture. So the wall of the sac is not the uh, true wall, but it's an aneurysm communicating with the lumen, and there is an arrow neck or a duct, 